All right, there's a Detroit Lions player that we have forgotten about, and he is impressing everyone in OTA, OTAs and as we head into rookie minicamp. Now, before you click away, because when I say the name, you like, oh, I never forgot about him. I'll explain what I mean by forgotten. The guy I'm talking about is Jack Campbell, who's just impressing everyone. He's had interceptions so far. Love what he's doing. And here's why I say he's forgotten. Jameer Gibbs, stand out standout running back that played so well for us last year sam laporta like all-time great tight end rookie season brian branch incredible hendon hooker we even talk about because it's like is he the backup whatever jack campbell it's that linebacker so it's just like position where you're not going to maybe shine like the other positions as easily but he's a really solid first round pick that he's going into his second year so it's like, man, he's really paying attention to what he's up to. So mini camp is underway. Day one, he had two interceptions. So he's going against Sam Laporta, which, again, this kind of like back and forth, the, the competition, the depth, what the Lions have created in just a few years is incredible. So just not only depth at positions, but you've got Sam Laporta going against Jack Campbell. So Jack Campbell's literally going against one of the best tight ends in the NFL day in and day out. So Laporta got the best of them in a couple back-to-back -back receptions for 33 yards right here. But then Jack Campbell, the ball gets tipped at the line of scrimmage, and Jack Campbell makes the athletic grab to end the drill. Then he gets another interception. Campbell closed the dominant red zone drill for the defense. During the final set of red zone, zone drills for the first teams, it was an absolute bloodbath for the defense. Goff went 0 for 4 with an interception. Carlton Davis blanketed Antoine Green. Uh, Melon Fon was on Laporta. Goff couldn't find anybody. And then to end the practice, Jack Campbell gets the interception. I think he's built off what he did at the tail end of last year. I think he's obviously more comfortable with the play calls is what Anzalone said about Jack Campbell's game. So <laughs> it's interesting because Again, we're so excited about these other guys that shined th these draft picks in and, and no fault to Jack Campbell, but Jameer Gibbs, unlike anything we've ever seen, Sam Laporta, Brian Branch, all these guys are great. But it's like, oh, yeah, we've got this first round pick in Jack Campbell. Remember, Jack Campbell's RAS score, which is that raw athletic score where they just kind of measure your size, your speed, your quickness, everything put together in a composite score. His was one of the best we've ever seen at the linebacker position. So he's fast, he's quick, he's got the size of Brian Erlacher, and he's just getting into his second year. I think we forget that. I think it's like, oh yeah, we had Jack Campbell. Like, no, he. this is a high pick, premium player out of Iowa, great player that is really exciting and, and just exactly what we wanted to see when, when you talk about him and what he can do. So Jack Campbell, 18th overall. His teammates say he sets the tone with his tenacious effort. And coaches call him amazing practice player. He does everything. Everything he does, he goes hard. This is a perfect fit culturally. Um, he does everything right. This is awesome. Now, switching gears a little bit. Jack Campbell, love it forgotten player that we're kind of forgetting about the next guy is um camp sutton is headed back to pittsburgh remember we signed him from pittsburgh and now he's going back there and he's still kind of involved in this domestic violence case clearly pittsburgh believes all right whatever he'll be okay or i don't know if he's gonna get any punishment from the league I don't, i'm not sure how that works but camp sutton going to pittsburgh Again, we signed him to a three-year, $33 million deal. He ranked among the worst corners in the league down the stretch and allowed a QB rating of 120 for the season. One of the strangest um, seasons I can remember from a corner where so dominant and didn't even hear his name and didn't even know he was on the team the first half of the year. Second half of the year, he was just getting burnt left and right. He was getting beat up. He was getting blocked. I mean, he's just getting... It's just like he wasn't, he, you couldn't, you could see him all the time because he's getting burnt. He's trying to, he's making tackles because his guy's catching the ball. And it's like, dude. So, really good to see that after trading for Carlton Davis on the first day of free agency, the Lions 
Uh, hope to move Sutton to CB2, kind of let him get his feet under him. But just a few days later, police in Florida went public with their search for him. Ooh, Sut Sutton fled the scene before police arrived during this case. He didn't show up. It took him, I get what, you know, another 12 days. Oh, here, right here. It took him. They came public with it 24 days after the alleged incident. And then 11 days later before he, he's like, yeah, you know what? Fine. I'll turn myself in. It's it's my bad. I, I didn't. Uh, it's my bad. Dude, what the heck are we doing? Okay. Other notes from practice going back to rookie minicamp. Strong day from Khalif Raymond. Like, what is it with that guy? Coaches love him. Everybody raves about him. He's constant, consistent, always there. Love it. Nate Sudfeld didn't get a single team rep until the final two sets of the seven on seven. Hooker continues to get most of the second and third team reps as they focus on his development. Good. Good to see. That's what you're hoping for. Sudfeld, love you. But, I mean, Hendon Hooker, come on. Like, need you. And, and it's just a matter of reps. And it's got to get him in there. Got to get a feel for the game. He'll be fine. Uh, another practice, another impressive play from Caden Davis, who made a toe tapping touchdown grab during the red zone drill. Although Chris Spielman did not think he got both feet down, waving his hands and complete another goal post. Chris Spielman's a defensive guy, so that's fine. But Caden Davis, another guy that we're kind of like keeping an eye on. And then another, uh, excuse me, a uh, strong start to practice for Levi, who tallied two sacks and a pressure early in the day. Love seeing that. And then here's another one. Vaki, that the fourth round mystery player continues to shine as a receiver, taking a screen for a touchdown and making a tough adjustment catch while falling to the ground. I think he has a long way to go to earn any sort of significant role in the offense, but I'm not counting him out for potentially challenging the RB3 role over Craig Reynolds. And I've been saying that. I'm not a... And everyone yells at me, and it's it's fine. But I'm not a Craig Reynolds fan, like most people. I think he's just a really solid player. But man, if you can bring in a um a guy like that, that's just kind of basically Craig Reynolds, but younger and a little bit better. And I don't know. I'm not saying that he is, but I mean it's okay to move on from from Craig Reynolds. I think that's completely fine. I think he's got a really good story, and we all like that. So we we give him the benefit of the doubt. But at the same time, it's like man, let's go. Let's move on from Craig Reynolds if we have to. Um, to Vaki. I'm, I'm totally good with that. All right. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We are, um, we are over 20,000. I was going to say, we need to get to 20,000. We are over 20,000 and absolutely loving that. So appreciate that. Anybody that's subscribed. And, um, but if you've watched a few videos by now and you, you haven't subscribed, it would, uh, it'd be awesome if you would. And, uh, we'll see all of you on the next one.